All right, so this lesson is going to be on the seedless variety of vascular plants. So, obviously we've discussed that vascular plants contain what is known as vascular tissue. Um, and what this does, this essentially serves as the plumbing for the plant. Um, basically because it carries water and uh, other dissolved substances throughout the plant. Um, so basically what a seedless vascular plants consist of, it's your club mosses and your ferns, but just something to keep in mind, um, the club mosses, which are also called spike mosses because of those uh, spiky shapes they generally have, they uh, are not really like your typical moss, and that we discussed in earlier sections um, because they do have that vascular tissue. And one um, adaptation that's um, specific to seedless vascular plants is that they have these structures called st uh, the strobilis and that's that this pointy structure obviously the top of the um, stem here uh, what that is, it's a, a compact cluster which uh, contains uh, structures that bear spores. And um, these spores are often carried by the wind. And if they do land in a favorable environment, they can grow to uh, form the gametophyte. Now we're going to talk about the divisions of the seedless vascular plants. Um, the first one is Lycophyta. Um, the Lycophytes, these um, are considered to be the descendants of the oldest group of vascular plants, um, which uh, fossil evidence suggests that at one point there were Lycophytes that grew to be 30 meters tall or more um, around the Paleozoic area, era. Um, but unlike tree mosses, these uh, club mosses actually have roots. Um, they're uh, they also have um, stems and small scaly leaf structures, which contain a vein that extends down the middle of each of those structures. Now most of these types of um, lycophytes are epiphytes. The word epiphyte meaning that they typically live anchored to another object or a plant. Um, and these actually provide nice habitats for insects and other small animals in the, the forest canopy. Um, the second division we have is the terephyta. Those include these plants called horsetails as well as ferns. Um, ferns are most comfortable in moist environment, but they can really be found anywhere. Uh, these three pictures I have here, um, just some examples of different types of ferns. The first one is an aquatic fern, um, which uh, is mutualistic with cyanobacteria. The second one is a staghorn fern. This is an example of an epiphyte because you can see it is latched onto that tree. Um, again, epiphytes are things that latch onto other things to grow. Finally, this one is a, a specific species called the Dryopteris. And the reason I included this is because it is an example of a fern that does not grow in a moist environment, not all, all ferns have to grow in a moist environment. Some are also found in dry environments. Um, now, you probably can't really observe this structure I'm showing here with the naked eye. Uh, it's about, really, in reality, the size of a pin. Um, and what this is, is a, a fern gametophyte. And it actually grows from a spore it contains male and female reproductive structures. Um, <laughs> after 
Uh, and I want you to think about why this uh, might be an advantage later on. But um, after the uh, sporophyte shoots up, um, the sporophyte is actually dependent on the gametophyte. And um, one adaptation of some of these ferns is that they can produce sporophytes without fertilization. But eventually the sporophyte will produce roots and a uh, thick underground stem like shown here. That, that thick stem is called a rhizome. And what happens is in the winter, that well always, that rhizome is used to store food. And in the winter, the top part of the plant, the above ground part will die off. And the rhizome is then used as a, a main food source for the fern. Um, for it to grow when the weather conditions are more beneficial. So then, yeah, the, spur the fern spores, uh, they actually form in this structure called a sporangium. And when you have clusters of sporangium on the leaves, we talked about this earlier uh, in the introduction, where they form what's called a sorus, which is one of these little clusters here. Multiple ones are called sori, uh, the Latin plural. And sori are usually located on the underside of the fronds, as shown in this picture on the right. Finally, um, horsetails is the other uh, type of um, paraphyta I have here showcased. Uh, another name for horsetails are scouring rushes because back in the colonial days they used to be used to scour uh, pots and pans much like our scouring rushes today and they, they're typically found in wet areas. Um, so that's really all I have for these three divisions of seedless vascular plants. Um, so just a couple review questions I have here. If I can get there. So just uh, think about the sporophyte and gametophyte generations of vascular plants versus those of uh, non-vascular plants. And if you need to pause. Uh, to think about that, feel free. And then secondly, like I said, I was going to ask, uh, infer the advantages of the fern sporophyte's initial dependency upon the gametophyte. And that is all I have for you. Um, on the seedless vascular plants, the next topic we will be discussing are the vascular seed plants. Uh, thank you very much for watching.